Hello everyone. Um, so I just wanted to make a quick video describing um, our extra credit opportunity for the semester. This is an opportunity that I have for all of my classes um, and it doesn't change too much from semester to semester uh, but I wanted to provide a quick video for it so it's part of the videos for this week if you are in Ocean 100 for CSM. If you're in another class then ignore that part of it. <laughs> um, so it's relatively straightforward, but I do want to go over it and you can reference back to this video uh, later on if you, um, at the end of the semester, you're completing the assignment and you need some further clarification um, or, you know, just want to reference back to this. Anyway, so um, basically this is something that uh, is available for you to complete all the way up until the end of the semester. So the reason that I do that is because it's a list um, of documentaries and, you know, it'd be kind of mean of me to have this as an extra credit opportunity and then only leave like two weeks left of the semester. So sometimes, you know, we're looking for something to watch um, to kind of lull us to sleep or something along those lines. And so that's why I have this particular assignment um, used for that. So um, basically I have a list here of different documentaries. I have them listed in uh, chronological order, for the most part anyway. Um, and I also have which streaming service that they are on as of uh, January 30th, 2023. And I did double check all these. They are still there. Um, but they're, you know, this could be incorrect in several months time. We all know how Netflix is with taking things off. <laughs> so, the first one is called The Inconvenient Truth, and there's two of them. Um, they're both by Al Gore, but one was made in the early 2000s, and the other one uh, was made a little bit more recently. Uh, you can rent those on YouTube. Um, and then the second one is, um, there's a, an either-or situation here. So you can either rent Chasing Ice on Amazon Prime or... Or you can watch James Baylog's TED Talk, which is free. So I really, really like this documentary because it really visually encapsulates what's happening to our uh, world's glaciers and to land ice. Um, so, you know, I think that we can talk about these things until we're blue in the face, but until we really see what's happening visually, uh, does it really ring true or does it really like stand out right so um i really like chasing ice uh because it goes through the whole journey that james and his team of the extreme ice survey went through in order to gather all the images that they wanted to get um it's a long and arduous process it they you know James actually had to get two knee surgeries about it because he's trying to like get out there and do all this work himself. Um, so I think it really nicely showcases the struggle and the struggle is real. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, and then the Ted talk is just a 20 minute version of a 90 minute documentary basically, but they're both very telling. I think they both showcase a lot of really wonderful information one is just a little bit more in depth than the other, and one you also have to pay money to rent, or um, one is free. The next one is Chasing Coral, and this one is on Netflix. Um, it's the same directors as, actually as Chasing Ice. However, it's uh, using, it's instead of looking at ice information, it's looking at what's happening to our coral reefs. Um, and I like this one a lot because it's also educational. So we learn a little bit more about um, coral, not just how beautiful and amazing and fantastic it is, but you learn about what it is. And there's like these really, really awesome visuals of like showcasing the fact that coral is indeed a plant and an animal, and it needs both of those um, aspects to survive. And then just like chasing ice, chasing coral goes through um, how really quite again, the process, the scientific process can be very arduous and really disheartening at times. Um, but it can be, and really emotional at times as well. You know, they're trying to do their best to capture all of these moments in history and what's happening to the coral. 
and it can be really, really quite sad. Um, I do, every time I watch it, I, I do indeed end up crying because it's just, I, you can feel the emotion that these um, folks are going through just to show what's happening in real time. So that one's really, really great. Highly recommend that one. Um, probably one of the, not, yeah, maybe one of the most out of, out of all of these. Next up is Before the Flood. So this is a documentary put out by Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, you can have your opinions on uh, him or whatever, but he wanted to make this documentary to really showcase all of the aspects of climate change and not just looking at like the ocean or the ice or whatever. There's like all of these impacts that he dives into. Um, he's always kind of been about the environment and about the world and climate change. Um, again, you can have your opinions on, well, he's rich and famous and he has all these yachts and he goes traveling all the time. So he really has a really, um, large carbon footprint, blah, 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 blah. I'm not disagreeing with you there, but I think that, um, him and his, uh, filming team do a really, really good job of showing what's happening. So he travels all over the world to see direct impacts of climate change. He goes to the Pacific islands and talks to world leaders and goes to Greenland and sees the ice melt. Like, I think, I think he did, straight up does a fantastic job of that. Um, and that is on Disney Plus. So if you uh, have Disney Plus, you can watch that there. Um, next up is a, a David Attenborough documentary. You may have heard that name before if you've ever watched Planet Earth or Blue Planet. Or um, there's various BBC docuseries on various streaming services. Um, he's an incredible narrator. He has gone to many different parts of the planet. So once as, you know, like showcase nature, he's almost kind of like, I don't want to say like Steve Irwin ish, but like kind of, if that makes sense. Um, but he made this documentary, it's called a life on our planet. Um, and it's basically his dying wish to show what the human, what humans have done in the past, um, 200 plus years in order to bring such vast and devastating change to our planet. Um, what I like about this one, and honestly, I would recommend ending with this one. If you choose to watch any of the other ones, I would say to end with this one because I think he, uh, he leaves things on a more positive note. Um, he kind of goes through some of these ideas of like, what we can do to help mitigate all of this bad change that we're doing and things along those lines. So that's my main suggestion there. Um, very similar to like the BBC uh, docuseries is the many, many that he's done where, you know, they're going through with um, some really beautiful camera work and just showing nature in, in all of its glory. So I would recommend that one to save for last. The last one is relatively new. This came out, uh, I think, in 2020. It was it kind of made some waves, if you will, um, uh, in in the press. Um, it's called Sea Spiracy. Uh, this follows a gentleman. I think his name is Ari, and it basically it like kind of starts with talking about overfishing and commercial whaling, and then kind of goes into plastic pollution and microplastics and like the crazy illegal uh, fishing industry that's out there. Um, I like it because I think it brings to light what is happening in our international waters and really showing what is occurring with overfishing and just the commercial fishing industry in general. Uh, frankly, it's going to, it's, uh, I will say, I don't want to say spoiler, it's not the right word. Um, trigger warning, it's not very pretty. Um, it's pretty devastating, actually. Um, and I have a little note at the bottom of this document um, that I'll touch into uh, here in just a second for pretty much any documentary. So um, after you've watched any of the film or multiple films, I would love for you to write a relatively short response paper regarding the documentaries. A thing that I would suggest would be to, you know, kind of jot some notes down either during or immediately after you watch them. So you can remind yourself what to write about later. Like if you just want to go ahead and watch it as you're going to sleep or something or kind of in the background, and then you want to return to this assignment and write about it later, that's just a suggestion. Um, <clears throat> in the past, I've done watch parties, but um, over Zoom now they blackout screens, so it can be kind of a pain. 
Um, but I may try and host one or two on SFS State, um, SFSU campus over the semester, but we'll see. Um, so your write-ups themselves, here's kind of the nitty-gritty of it. So I want, should be basically three paragraphs. One paragraph should be a very brief but accurate summary of the film. An evaluation of the documentary should be uh, your second paragraph. This should basically be the bulk of your write-up, and I want you to focus your, on your reaction to the film. You're likely going to react in some way, shape, form, or another to these films. So I, I want to know what that is. Did it, you know, did it change your mind on anything? Do you think anything was sensationalized? Do you have, what opinions do you have about this documentary? And then lastly, maybe your third, fourth, or fifth paragraph is a conclusion. So just kind of wrap things up a little bit. Don't just end it abruptly, but kind of wrap things up in a couple of sentences. So basically, I want to see that you've actually watched them and you've thought critically about the ideas that are presented. Um, I would say minimum of one page, maximum of two pages per documentary. Uh, as much as I love reading 10 pages on one documentary, it can be a little bit much, especially at that time of the semester. Um, so overall, each write-up is worth 10 points and can be applied to any section of your grade. Um, if you refer back to the syllabus, you know, there's different sections of the grade, and so you can apply it to any one. Um, it doesn't really matter, um, but basically each documentary um, is worth 10 points. So if you add all those up, you have the opportunity to earn up to 70 points of extra credit. Um, why I have chosen these particular documentaries is because they really dive into the harmful effects of climate change on many, many different levels that I wish I could spend hours lecturing on, but I just can't, right? But I think, you know, visual visuals are much easier to process, and also, also I'm just a super visual person, so I like seeing things um, to believe them in a sense, and they can kind of trigger um, just different reactions. And then... Biggest, biggest thing here, um, like any documentary or film or article you read or anything like that, you got to take some of this information with a grain of salt, all right? So some of the films are, are a bit dated, like the first Inconvenient Truth, that was early 2000s, so it's like, what, a 20-year-old documentary at this point? One in particular, aka Seaspiracy, is super vegan propaganda-y. And um, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to push veganism on you because that's not the case at all. Um, I just want to make sure that you know that. <laughs> but I just think that it has some really, um, really stark and scary visuals about what's happening in the fishing industry. Um, but at the very end, they literally like the only way to save the world is to switch to a plant based diet. It's like, not, that's not necessarily the case. I'm, so I just want you to know that I'm not pushing that on you. Okay. Um, and then uh, some may feel sensational, sensationalized. So some some folks um, have given me feedback that before the flood is just a little bit over the top and a little bit much. And that's fine. You have your own opinions, you know, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so that's kind of the, the main breakdown uh, of the extra credit opportunity. Um, so you can have watch parties with folks. Um, you know, there's a reason why I give you all semester long to do it. Um, it's just do the Sunday before finals week. It's the same uh, deadline as all the other late work and just work in general. So please reach out if you have any questions, comments, and or concerns, and I look forward to reading your write-ups of these documentaries. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye!